Today in the news, AMD's next, next, next generation of CPUs is big and little, and we got companies doing bad, bad things. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Yep, despite the dozens of videos about Intel that came out today, we're gonna talk about Team Red. It looks like the company is planning something pretty big, or little, depending on how you look at it, for mid-2023. Currently, the company is on their Zen 3 platform, and since it's now been a year since its release, we can expect their previously teased Zen 3 architecture with 3D vCache early next year. Heck, the company even went ahead and confirmed that late next year, we'll be looking at Zen 4. After that though, all we had were leaks here and there about Zen 5 and Zen 4D being used together to create a hybrid architecture, La big dot little or alder lake i made a whole video about this all the way back in june so you can check it out over here it was about a leaked patent well now we might have some extra information about how these cores will differ according to moore's law is dead zen 4d or zen 4 dense that's apparently the name of that architecture will essentially be just like the efficient cores in alder lake the big difference here is that instead of matching the uh, speed of a six-year-old architecture, like the Gracemont cores did with Skylake, AMD is going to pack Zen 4 grade performance into Zen 4D by redesigning the cache system, reducing the clock speeds, and keeping the multi-threading. That's pretty important. And they're gonna have their own chiplet. You allegedly could have one chiplet with up to eight Zen 5 cores and another with up to 16 Zen 4D cores. This is eerily similar to Raptor Lake, which uh, should come out next year. Raptor Lake would have eight of their P cores from Intel and 16 of their efficient cores. Intel would still have them on a single die though. According to all current rumors, AMD would launch Zen 5 in mid-2023, with the Zen 5 and Zen 4D combo being available for the desktop market. In that same year, interestingly enough, Intel would have their first chiplet CPUs. It's gonna be a pretty interesting year. I mean, Intel's gonna have their uh, big dot little in chiplet form, and so will AMD. Next up, let's talk Glorious. Not the adjective, but the company, which is now in a bit of trouble. Glorious kind of blew up in the PC space when they introduced their Model O mouse. A mouse that, while slightly different in dimensions, did borrow a lot of the design from Final Mouse. After that, the company went out and branched into custom keyboards and keyboard parts, which is now a large part of their business. This is where the company got itself in trouble with the custom keyboard community. A while ago, a creator called Alexidus, I hope that's how you say it, designed a keycap set called Aether. It's a really nice gradient that goes from red to purple to blue to black. There was also another keyboard design called the SA Dream Eater, and that has a cyan to blue gradient. Well, Glorious kind of borrowed these designs too. They call them the Celestial Series of keycaps, and well, it did not fly with the community. Pretty much everyone got involved, including Teha Types. I don't know about you, but Glorious has been pretty much ignoring the situation, and it they went completely radio silent, so yeah, I think they look pretty guilty. In other bad company moves, we now have Gigabyte on the hot plate. The company's in-house extreme overclocker, called High Cookie, recently posted an 8 gigahertz overclocking result for the uh, 12900K. This overclocking result made the rounds in the news outlets. Pretty much every outlet had an article about it, and presumably it gave Gigabyte some good publicity. Well, the legitimacy of this record is now very much so in question. The developer of the CPU Z validator recently explained that Alder Lake overclocking had a bug that would show 8, 9, or even 12 gigahertz during the validation. Obviously, that wasn't the actual clock of the chip. Thankfully though, Intel managed to find a fix, but they couldn't implement it in silicon, so it came up as a microcode update. Now, CPUZ did a lot of cleaning up to remove all of these bad OC results from their database, and they found that out of all the runs done, Alder Lake pretty much maxes out at seven gigahertz all core, and for the SUI runs, which are single core, it would go all the way up to 7.5 or 7.6 gigahertz, plus or minus a couple of megahertz. So yeah, we're dealing with 
very close results. And that's the consensus across hundreds of CPU samples. So yeah, to me, it looks like Gigabyte essentially made the bug happen without it being detected by CPU-Z, and they sent out the press releases to all the media about this eight gigahertz overclock, which turns out was probably faked. The developer for the CPU-Z validator also came up with some uh, ways that this could have been done, allegedly. And Derbauer also called out a high cookie. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories, maybe. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. And subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Why am I talking like that? I don't know. Goodbye. <laughs>